Uh, this is the Royal Crane Church of Christ in Umber, Texas, and this is Wednesday, October 16, 2024. This is uh, Wednesday, Sunday, I mean, Wednesday, forgive me, study of the Bible called Even a Drunk, Blind, Sleeping Man Can Enter the Broad Gate. Even a Drunk, Blind, Sleeping Man Can Enter the Broad Gate. Matthew seven thirteen to 14. Now, in this study, uh, we're going to find out that these words, these three words, drunk, blind, and sleepwalking, man, because that is people that they walk, they have recorded them, uh, they get up, they sometimes have wounds on their body, so some of them will ask uh, physicians or family to film them, see what's happened, they might be sleepwalking, they'll get up. And they may not do the zombie walk like people do with the arms stuck out, but they will walk, go to the refrigerator, open, and just go through normal things, but they're asleep. And so you're not going to be able to have a conversation with them, and they're not aware. That's why they bump into stuff uh, that may have a pattern in their mind uh, that they know which way to go, and we understand that. But the key is, is that all three of these terms are contrary to Christ who wants our eyes to be wide open, he wants us to be sober, and to stay woke. So that's how easy it is. You can never get into the straight gate drunk, being blind, or sleepwalking. And one of the things that we want to press on the heart is, we want to look at a list of these things that you need to go through this broad gate. Look at Matthew 13. This is a list of different attributes you'll need uh, to get in there. You know, it's wonderful that God has taught us these things because they are mind-blowing and that we really have to understand it is so easy to go through that particular gate that is broad, that way that's broad. And first I want to look at our text, Matthew 7, first let's go down 13, then we'll go to some scriptures showing what is needed. Matthew 7, 13. Jesus instructed, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which lead unto life. And few there be that find it. And we talk about this word, this word straight, and we want to deal with it uh to understand in this particular lesson, why is it so difficult to get through that straight? It's the word they have is S-T-R-A-I-T. It's the Greek word G4728, G4728, narrow. And the thing is, from obstacles standing close about. So that's nothing that's going to get in your way that you don't bring yourself. You're going to bring something that's going to require you to go to the broad gate. Because this one's narrow. The law that says up where it's, it's, got, it's got a clear path, straight, clear path, just follow Christ. He goes, he'll go right through it. But the problem is, is we can't bring nothing with us that the law did not give us. And that's where we're at. Uh, also, not only is the understanding of straight for the gate, but then he says, Narrow is the way which leads to life. That word G twenty three forty six, Greek word G twenty three forty six, to crowd twenty three forty six to crowd, literally or figuratively, afflict, narrow, thrown, suffer, tribulation, trouble. So it squeezed. If you were thrown about with people, you would be squeezed up, or you'd be like, man, it's all these people around me, and I, I can only seem to go one way to get out the crowd. And so we understand that. Now, let's go now to Matthew 13 and 10. And we'll find out some interesting things here. Matthew 13 and 10. It's a real thing, brethren, and we have to understand it. And disciples came and said unto them, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, and this is right after he tells the story of the seed, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Now, you know, this is important. It is very difficult, brethren, for us to accept 
I remember Henry said it one day, and he was kind of just, on here and Steve, he just kind of looking, gazing, because he and Brother Fritz and I were talking about the powers of God, and he just said, man, God is really powerful. And by him just saying that, we were like, yeah. Because it was like, yeah, we, we were feeling what you're saying, because it's like, it's like beyond what your mind can grab. We were talking about a deep subject. It's like, saints just aren't getting it. They can't accept predestined. This statement says, the disciples of Christ, Jesus Christ, not that false church that exists today, those individuals were given this by God. The other people who are fighting against, arguing, disputing, the Judas is who's one of them. He he got it. See, this is the part of the thing I said about Judas. Judas got everything but some important things to remember. To stay away from criminals like the Pharisees, to recognize the only Savior is Christ, to remember to listen to what Jesus said, all men are sinners be forgiven against the Son of Man. He missed some very important things. And he forgot the understanding of faith, which the Pharisees did not have. Jesus told them that. He said, he said, you do these things of giving to the Pharisees, but you deny absorbance into your system of mercy, judgment, justice, faith. So Judas is right now, he doesn't have faith in everything Christ said. The other disciples are kind of struggling on that too, but they don't lose what they have to the level of they sell Christ out. Peter denies he even knows him, which is awful, but it still doesn't cause Christ to die. None of them cause Christ to die as an active agent other than the insider Judas. Always remember that can be an insider among you, no matter what thing you're doing in life, whatever it is, that can sell you out and you just have to suffer. So we see here, though, that they all got it. So Judas got it. He has the ability to understand. He got it. But the desire for finances overrode. It isn't like here as Stephen said one day, because I was trying to remember how much money was. He said, it wasn't a lot of money, man. I said, you know, that's right. It really wasn't like you no know, billions of dollars. But when you're greedy for money, it doesn't take a lot. It just takes enough to cause you to miss heaven. And so the understanding is, Matthew 13 and 12 now, he says, in verse 11, it's not given to them. So Jesus is saying, I'm saying this thing, but I'm going to explain it to you guys because it's not given to them. Now, you've got to understand, you may think, well, they're all going to live till they can get baptized. No, 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 no. You have to understand, there are people dying all the time, brethren. You can't say the people that it wasn't given to. That would mean that anybody Jesus spoke to or heard what he said, none of them could die until after Pentecost. That's ridiculous because Jesus was teaching for over three years. So no, no, no. If they're going to die lost, why? Because it's not given to them. Why? Because the Lord knows you didn't like what Moses told you. And you aren't one of the ones I'm going to say because I know what you're going to do. So I have this Box lunch of salvation only for those I know who are going to make it. That's why you have to help your family understand you're not going to be saved outside the church. It's not given to the world to know. Even there are some saints in the church that are not right. It's not given them because this is different, definitely saints. These are saints he's talking to. And so look at verse 12 now. For whosoever had, this is the power of this, and I know there are some really good evangelists in the church. They love the Lord, but they can't accept. They're like Peter. I can't believe I'm going to deny you, and I don't care if you said it. Mm. That's how they are. I'm just not going to believe what you're saying, Lord. I don't care if I was standing there. Listen, you and your father don't know who's going to be saved. I heard a gospel preacher say that. He wants everyone saved. So it's like he, he's saying he wants everyone saved, and he does, but... He's also saying something the Lord didn't say is that I don't know who's going to be saved. It's like, you listen, that, that's reasoning. That's reasoning. Because he thinks God's saying, I want everyone to be saved. Wink, wink. No, he does. But he knows, I know the future before it happens. I know the present and the past at all times. I'm aware of everything. But I know you guys don't want to be saved, so you won't ever get this. But this group wants to be saved as deep as it is, 
they're going to get it. That's why James says not many nobles are chosen. You know, you have some great people. I, 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 what I mean by great, I'm just going to tell you something. People that have accomplished great things. Alexander the Great. Nebuchadnezzar. Well, modern day people. I mean, they've accomplished massive things. I, I use two presidential candidates, Biden, Trump, and Harris. They've all accomplished great things. No matter what side, they've accomplished some great stuff in life. They're noble. So this is the type of people, not because they're pockets. You have rich people also. How are you? Accomplished great things. You know, this guy was putting plans together like people build specialty cars. But he's a noble. And sometimes the nobles just don't get it. That's what James is saying. They're nobles. They're powerful. But he says the Lord hasn't chosen. He hasn't chosen. Why? Because you're not the one that's destined. Because your heart is the heart that I say. It's difficult for a saint. And it can cause you to leave the church, brother. It really can. Because you have to accept as here as Gaden said, God is something awesome. It's unbelievable power. It's like it, our minds can't even grab it. He knows these things. But you can't tell he knows it because he just lets it go. He knows exactly where it's going. So this type of text here, Prick Mark said, we need to talk about this because this is where the problem is at in the saints heart. So it says, for whosoever hath to him shall be given. So if you have the faith, as the Bible says, from faith to faith. If you have faith, more faith will be given to you as you hear more truth, you will gain more faith. Look what he says, and he shall have more abundance. He already has a lot, but he's going to get more. But whosoever hath not, so if you don't have the type of faith needed in all points, from him shall be taken even that he hath. This is why you see a guy like Judas with all the power of the other disciples blowing. Because what he did have, he can't hold. Because what he had, that you say, well, it seems like he got it. He was Christ. He can't keep that. That's left because he's not one of the ones that will hold on to it. The Bible talks about in Revelation, the same thing it said. Hold fast to that which remains to that whole church, he said. While it remains. And I'm still seeing this other part that you messed up on. But you better hold what you got. Sometimes saints, when they go off, man, they skid off of the platform, like people say, they're, they're off the grid. And only quit coming to church. They quit living right in all the aspects that even denominational people have to scratch their head and look at. Man, you know, even the denominational guy going home to his wife, what are you doing going to the girl? Because, like, man, he used to go to church. You know, he used to go to church of Christ. Yeah, but he, he's lost it. What he looked like he had, so he thinks he's going to hold. He thinks when he hears the instruction of Christ and doesn't listen to all, he thinks or she thinks, well, I've got this, I've got, you don't have your family. You know who helps us understand that best? Amos, when he tells a great king, why would a queen become a harlot? She might run around on an old man with some of the men, but a harlot? You're a queen. Why would you go on the street selling your body? But Amos says, your wife's going to become a harlot. He talks about the other things that happen. And you know, this guy's like, man, you lost your mind. You would think that's crazy. But this comes from God. Amos don't know about it. He just repeats what God says. And you have to understand, what she seemed to have, she lost. Why? Because she's involved with crooks like her husband, who's a king, and I'm, am, I, am I telling him he can't sin? Am I telling him this is wrong? Am I asking to be released? Or am I just two thumbs up? That's, that's, it. that's his sin. No, because you're in the king. You're in his lair. You're right there. So we have to understand that, brother. That's why I mention things like, I don't see how a woman can stand with a man that teaches people how to go to hell. And you're sitting there like every Sunday, and you got doubts too. You don't, if you do discussion, you won't take any type of action against it, it's like, wow, this is what this type of woman does, a Jezebel type. 
to where Jezebel literally outdoes her. She, I mean, come on, hard to men. She becomes a hard experience. See, that's why people don't realize that keep it in the right box. Jezebel has never touched another man. No scripture says it. But she's a hard spiritually. But this woman is a hard physically. Mm. And she hasn't lived that yet. But God knows. And so we're going to grab this, make sure we hold on. It uh, says, it's going to be taken even that. Yes, yeah, he had it, but it's taken away. Therefore, speak out to them in parables, because they seeing not and hearing not, neither do they understand. So the three areas, see, hear, and understand. As I always said, the blind person, uh, a drunk person, see, they're not so because understanding is not that. And an individual sleepwalking. Instead of me watching, I'm knocked out sleep. I want the Lord always talking. Stay woke, stay woke, stay woke. So he says, and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which is Isaiah, which says, Now here comes the prophecy in advance. By hearing you shall hear and shall not understand. When you tell a person that, you got to go, man, this dude is crazy. Tell me I'm not here and I understand. But he's telling you in advance. And seeing, you shall see and shall not perceive. He's going to explain why, verse 15. For this people's heart is waxed grown. Here is the root. Where's the root? My heart is waxed growth. My inner man is just layered with all manner of ill will, discontent towards God and those that are of him. And so, therefore, you're telling me things that those people are getting, but I'm not. Because there's a holding back of it. Remember, because the Lord is saying, I don't want that person to say, but he already knows before he makes them what, you know, we talk a lot of details about this, about creation, because we've read out of And brethren, we are clear. God knows he's making you what you want to be. See, that, that, that's what people don't give him credit for. So, you know, he's not going to be happy if I, if I give him probably righteous. Because I know he's going to be. But i got to let him have that power. See, if God doesn't give you that power, it says, I'll send you strong delusion. Why? Because I know what you want to be. But nobody else knows. You were a baby hugging everybody, and the other guy's a baby. You were in school. You might have outdone the other person with good deeds. But when you came to yourself, you got drunk. God got your eyes and plugged your ear. I've been like a fool. And God knew that. So the information given, brethren, it is guaranteed. To come back that you're saved. But I can't give you. Because that's what the law says. Or I got to heal you. He knows if I give you here, I got to heal you. I don't want you healed because that's not what you want. You don't want to be healed. You'll find that in a lot of people in life. They'll tell you. I'm out here getting high. I know what I'm doing. I know the word. I'm talking about saints. I'm talking about saints. I know what I'm doing. Uh, you know, just pray for me, you know. But I know what I'm doing, you know. And that's where I want to be. I don't, don't rescue me. Yeah, let's, uh, I'm telling you, brother, I'm talking to people. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, that's where they're at. God help them. Because that's the one that he's not going to heal. So he says, and look what he says. The heart is wax growth, verse 15, and their ears are dull of hearing. This dull of hearing. It's like, you know, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. You know? Say what? But if the law is so wonderful, how come we got all these crooked politicians? Somebody said, oh, man, everybody not crooked. There's a lot of them, but that doesn't have to do with the Lord. Mm. He's not saying, no, you guys be crooked. People go with some nonsense. Bro, free. The teacher, my brother. You know, Romans 5, 20 says, uh, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness. Unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So here is saying that grace reign, which is rule, through righteousness unto eternal life. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to all the saints of God around the world, um, we're kings and priests, and Jesus is watching over his church, and he gives grace to those who practice what is right in his eyesight. That's what righteousness is, what he accepts. So when a person repents in the kingdom, when they fix things uh, in the church that need to be fixed, God has grace because he sees them fixing, you know, the seven churches in Revelation. And 
<clears throat> he gave them space to repent. Uh, he told them what was wrong. And when it comes to us in the kingdom, when we see what's wrong and we fix it, then he gives a grace because this is what it says. It says that grace might reign through righteousness. Mm -hmm. So what's right in his eyesight, once it gets fixed, then he sees that, and that's what he loves. He loves when we obey his commandments and we make things right, whether it's with the brethren, whether it's a uh, child telling them the right thing, whether it's a uh, spouse in the kingdom, whether it's um, sitting someone down, like say a woman that wants to you know, do the Lord's Supper or preach. Whatever it is, you know, Christ is looking at the change that's being made if we're submitting to his word. Like that, there was a king that... Uh, I want to keep the law of Moses, mm -hmm. and I believe he mentions he didn't kill uh, the uh, the sons. Yes, that's what yeah. he sure did. And yeah. so, you know, that was noted because God note he recognized that mm -hmm. he recognized this is a, what's right about him. Mm -hmm. Of course, he had other things that were wrong, but right. God wanted that written. That's and right. so, when it comes to grace, God gives grace to those who submit to His will. They see His word, they submit to it, mm -hmm. and then that's where He gives more and more grace because. You know, he, he's the author and finisher of our faith, and he's consistently guiding us to see, you know, what he wants to, us to do that's right. Amen. Thank you. Preach it, God. Says, man, that's good, because he's using that word grace, brother. That's what we need. Lord sees that, and he, he, he's for us. Like the preacher just said, he wants us to make it. And let that guy just <laughs> tag that part right. He said, okay. Now, you got that right. And this is what... This is one of the things we got to deal with, brethren, is we've got to transfer the thoughts of God in words to the hearts of men because men and women in the church can get really hard on people when they arrive, spiritually. I mean, spiritually. Once they make it to a lower, they, they say, I'm balanced, man. Now, come on, bring it, bring it, chief. It's your turn, bring it. But, but now see, when they're trying to get to that level, Everybody's patient, loving them, and consoling them. But when you get that, you got to watch that. I have to watch. We all got to watch. I, I used to have to struggle with watching that. Tell you to understand, hey, man, dude, this was nothing to do with you. This is the Lord's strength. You just wanted it done. Then you adjust and calm down because if you don't, you're not going to be any different than James and John, who wanted fire to come down to torch the Samaritans. And their mind... They're looking at these are Samaritans. I mean, too, we don't even deal with you guy. He's your preacher, you, and you're not going to uh, accept? Master, can we call that from? No, you don't know what spirit is. The Holy Ghost is about repair, patience, like the preacher said, grace, space to repent. To a gentleman? Yeah, even her. Yeah. The one that's in the New Testament. So we know if he gave her judge, uh, space, he gave the one in the Old Testament space. Why? Because he's the same yesterday, day, and forever. We can definitely tag that to that statement. This is what we've got to watch in the brotherhood. Being Pharisee, lawyer, these particular ones. Then their scribes that were with the Pharisee. Hard. And it's like, but they themselves need grace and mercy too. Mm -hmm. And so we have to say that. And, and for some reason, brethren, you know, when we have a saint in trouble, we ourselves in trouble. When you you're saying like, so you can't get them grace. It's like, what happened? You were ready to receive it, but you want to give it. That's a flaw in the car. That's a Jonah syndrome. Jonah no good and well. He didn't sin. He sin. And right, he almost got ate up by the fish. The Lord in the spot. That fish was that fish wasn't eating him, just, swallowing him just to, to take medicine, squeeze medicine out of his flesh and let him out to live. No, man, I, 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 I want to get you. But God spared. And we don't want to be like that. So thank you, preacher. We see now in Matthew 13, here is the, the, the understanding of the heart is a problem. And now the ears are dull. And look at this. And their eyes, they have closed. See, the Lord's looking at, so you close your eyes when I tell you about Moses, all these wonderful things. Okay, 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 cool. So I'm going to help you keep them eyes closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. See, that's the Lord telling Isaiah, say this to them about me. Because this is explaining because Isaiah was looking like, 
man, what is wrong with these people? He doesn't know this till the Lord tells him. But now look what now Jesus quotes that. Now, now look what Jesus says in verse 16. But blessed are your eyes, for they see. Is God a rip off? He's holding them back, the people who can't see? No. The apostles want to see, but they can't see unless the Lord lets them see. That's why, brethren, count it all joy that you understand. I'm telling you, brethren, sometimes I look at a scripture and I go on the light. I, it just makes you emotional. I say, I can see it. But I say, Lord, how can I see it? I say, Lord, you know me. You know what I've done. How can I see this? And these other great men. Can I say, and the other great women. How is that possible? I say, it has to be you. That's why I'm so humble. I'm talking to them like that. It has to be you. There's no way a person like me should be involved with this. There's no way I've not done anything like that to be great. So it's like, as far as one like, we should save all that. Nobody's in heaven talking like that. So, it's like, so why do you see? That's why I just said, it's a blessing. He's blessed you. So that's why we need to be humble and be gracious to others who we don't know if they're ever going to get it or they might get it. But we still need to be humble and work with them as willing as they are to be worked with. Because if the Lord sees, you don't want to get the Lord's attention acting a fool. Like a bad kid, you know, my daddy going to see you. And you keep on saying, well, yeah, oh, he's coming here. He saw you. And that's it. Everybody ready to run because they know it's you. He's coming for you. Hey, come here. Let me talk to you. It's uh-oh, uh-oh. Because he's looking. Okay, oh, you think you did this? Even with Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel has explained them, and he knows so. So you're going to say it again. After Daniel told you, you think you, think you did this? Man, tell him, watch us. Tell him. The voice of whoever spoke from the... Tell this fool what's going to happen. He's going to be handled. Because he's got to get it. Because the law says, I want balance. Even among the Gentiles, I want balance. Y'all got to know who I am. If there's any hope for the few that's going to come out of this, y'all got to have stories like this about Nebuchadnezzar. So he says here, Bless your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For truly I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see. And I've not seen them, and to hear those things that you hear, and I've not heard them. Not because they were evil, it wasn't time. He imagine now Jesus knows who great people are. See, so he, he compares to them, because they're reading about these great people. He said, man, the great people that would have loved to see what you see. Talked about it, just didn't see it. And so he explains then the understanding of the parable, verse 18. Hear you therefore the parable of the soul. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catch it away that which was sown in his heart. This is why you need, I remember Keith talking to his wife, man. Keith talked to someone, it's in my mind for life. Stuff y'all say, me and them women. He talked about, you need, you got four gospels. He kept going through all the gospels until he finally got us to who cut off that guy Isaiah Peter. I was about to say, man, this is wow. This is how you study. And you got to look at, all the stories, some stories are only one time. They're going to tell you everything. But this story has different snapshots of the soil. And it explains when you see, man, they hear the word. And the devil just going to take it like a bird so they can see it. Yeah, but it's different. They don't understand it. Is it understanding mean, I mean, they didn't teach it right? I don't speak language. No. I don't understand. Why does it got to be like that? I mean, Why? Why should he have to die on the cross? What sense does that make? See, their mind not going to understand. So the devil comes, seed down, like the bird, you need a seed out there. I'm telling you, you need a seed out man. The bird's coming. They come and get And the devil, you leave that word out there and don't put it in you, he come and snatch it away from your mentality. Then come at the weak one, catch it away, that which was sown in his heart. Now notice, it was sown in his heart. See, the Lord put it in there. But he doesn't accept it. So here come that bird. You'll put it up just like a, a worm. Put, it's full of our birds. The devil will put it up. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that receiveth seed in stony places, he's going to explain all four. The same as he that heareth the word and anon with joy received it. Yet hath he no root in himself, but he endured for a while. But when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by, he's offended. What does that mean? What it says? That's tribulation and persecution that comes because of your involvement in the Word of God. How you live and what you say. It'll come from saints, from your family.
family, from your workplace, from the entertainment areas, you just get criticized. You know, you just gonna get criticized. You mention something about the laws, here comes the rocks. And you get tired, oh man, that was hit my eyes. Oh, so, man, it's not right. We should have just something like that. That that particular thought that was thrown, it's causing me to not be able to see the things I want. You you're hurting me. So you go, if I just quit saying it, they'll leave me alone. And they will. That ground right here, he, he's not saying about G. Okay, he ain't saying this time. Okay. I'm talking about. They're not going to hit you no more. They're not going to bother you no more. This is a flaw, brother, that cannot be in your life. And that doesn't mean that, you know, if you don't tell a certain person in a certain setting something at that time that you're dodging. No, it just means your everyday life. You're talking about the law. You think you're inviting people out. So you might invite somebody out to gospel meeting. We have November 3rd through the 6th. You might invite somebody to worship. Bible study, you know, God, man, you're always doing this. Why do you do this, man? You're pressuring people. You know, if, if people want to come to church, they'll come. They don't pressure people like that. And that's a rock. So you're not like, well, man, I'm not done there. You are saying it. You're trying to bring, you're trying to French on my right. You wouldn't like if I came and told you that's going to worship the devil with some, huh? Not that I worship You'd get arguments like they'd be like, no, man, you know. See, now you go like, now, next guy you're trying to go to, you may, he may look at your robe, like, man, what's up, man? Now, he ready to receive because of the Facial expression of the other guy and this guy face look the same. I've seen some rough people, and I mean rough, like they will bite your face off if you say something about D. And you tell them, hey, hey man, I want to get something about the church. You grab, okay, about church? And he might come, hold on, hold on. So, so, so this is just like, this is why you go to church. And so I thought this guy was fighting, but he didn't see some person look so wonderful, and they'd be like, no, baby, no, no, and get that walk off. Don't judge it. Freely give the son of seed out, man, the sword just that's why it hits the rock. Because the literal seed, that's the kind, the, the sword, he really has a bag, and he literally, he knows I'm going to lose some seed. I know it's going to hit rock. It's cool. The rest is going to dirt. We got it. And that's the kind of sword he's talking about. He's tossing it everywhere, man. It's going to hit some spots along the road. But he knows, okay, that little bit won't hurt because the majority is going to go into the soil. This is the type of magic Christ used. Because the word is flung out, brethren. Sometimes you got that auntie you love. They all, man, they talk about Jesus more than you. Literally. Because they they're trying to push, I'm one. I'm one, but they're not. And they just fight the word. Oh, baby, no, no, you know you talking. You talk to the choir. No, no, we're not talking to the choir. Because you don't believe. Then you got that other person over there. You know, that's arguing a lot and fussing about stuff. But have you ever just said, hey, hey, you want to come to the gospel meeting? Let me tell you, when is it? And you'd be like, well, you about to pass off. <laughs> hey, well, I just got through fussing, cussing on Uncle so so They realize they need the Lord. And this is why I said, brother, we don't know. So he's trying to tell us, not trying, he is telling us about the seed. Look at verse uh, number 22. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word. And the care of this world, it's a different person. And the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. Notice that first in the care of this world. This is where we're raising babies, raising our cousins' babies because they're on drug in jail. We're raising the neighbor's baby because they got killed in a fire. And we're doing all these things, taking them to baseball games and clapping and Watching them graduate and their first baby and do all. You're just so caught up in life and baking bread or fixing people's cars. You forget the importance of worshiping Christ and listening to them. It's the care of the world. It's nothing crooked, stealing. The deceitfulness of riches. That's all your some stuff might get into crooked. Choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. He just cannot produce the fruit. But he that received the seed in the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it. That would have to be on his part. He'd have to go, well, you know, I see, I see why babies are dying in foreign countries and they're being starved to death because men are evil. And the Lord said, offenses must need to come. He's going to use that as a judgment. And the Lord will fix it in the end. See, he's getting it. Like, Man, I see, what kind of God going to let a baby die? What kind of God? I've heard people go crazy. But the idea is that person, he understands because he has a heart that's predestined. It's not that God, may I'm going to make this heart to go to heaven and this one go to hell. No, it's that I know what this heart wants before I make it. 
See, if God didn't know he'd be like us, he's going to make this hard. Jesus, Holy Ghost, keep your fingers crossed. I'm going to make sure it's like, I know what he's going to be. But he doesn't know, and you don't know. That's why he'll be talking one minute, he's talking about the law. Judas gives no signs of crookedness. I mean, that was no regular thing when he go to heal somebody. I don't know why we heal these fools. Get up and walk. It's just, he gets caught up into life. The deceitfulness of riches. We know that's one thing. Because he asked, they didn't tell him. He asked them, How much, what will you give me? What will you give me? See, that means I'm deceived by riches. That's one thing we know he had. We don't know all, but we know that. And so he said, he bare fruit, brings 60-fold, 30-fold, 100-fold. Different amounts, but the same fruit. He's not bringing oranges and then the other guy's bringing apples. Everybody's bringing oranges. Only and at different amounts. So all these are going to be rescued. It's just different amount of productivity. One more thing we want to look at is the importance of this. This parable of the seed is a most critical parable. So you got to say, well, why would he say unto the disciples the breakdown? Oh, he's got a reason. He said because these is not given to him. They're not going to be saved. But I still got to tell them. Jesus said, if you don't get this parable, how do you get the other? And this is a parable he held back on? He yes. Because he said, I give it to him. Look at Mark 4. This is the other account. Look at Matthew. Now let's look at Mark 4. That's why I was taught by Brother Keith to look at the other because they have something different to say. Mark chapter 4 and verse 10. That's the same parable. Pick up right at when they asked him. When he was alone, they were about him with the twelve. That Judas is down. Asked of him the parable. And he said unto them. Now watch what he said. Same thing. Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without. Did you see this? All these things are done in parables. See, those that are outside, now notice what he says. Let's look at it again. It is given to them the mission of the kingdom of God, but to them that are out, all these things are done in parables. See, they're outside of that group. Brethren, you've got to really be so appreciative. There's no word I can tell you. There's no action you can do other than just be thankful that God has chosen you to be able to get it. And you got to still prove you're going to hold it. So you don't lose that then what you thought you had. You're going to lose that too. Because he is clear. This parable will not be given those that without. That seeing they may see and perceive not. Now notice how he says it. And I'm not trying to simplify this. It. It's so powerful. You have to look at it. It's like a man to be really saying that. Yes. Yeah, that seeing they may see and not perceive. So I see it. But I don't get it. See, that's something blocking you because your heart is waxed to grow. You're talking about Jesus, but he's not in the heart. And hearing, they may hear. And now that's that. See, now that goes to understanding for all attached to the hearing. I heard it. I can't give you words. I kind of got it. I heard it. I heard you, but I don't understand it. But it's got to be said to them so they can hear. Now that's that. You say, well, why would God block it? Because the heart is gross. That is so much devilment. You might not can't even see it. You would be hard pressed to find the devilment of the Pharisees without Christ. You'd be hard pressed. The apostles were even bamboozled by them. They said, Master, you know, you offended the Pharisees. You offended them. The Pharisees, Master, you offended them. He said, Leave them alone. They're blind leaders of the blind. They're blind leaders of the blind. They're both going to death. The apostles are like, Huh? It's like, because they know. Well, no, see, these guys are crazy. They're not running women. They're not homosexual. They're not touching babies. They're not ravens. They're not thieves like stealing money. They have a heart of greed, but, but not like that. And they're like, they even understand, oh, it's blood money now. <laughs> so we can't put it back in the church and see down the stairs. It was like, I don't get this other stuff. My heart is racked real. He's not letting me have it. The father is working in Christ. Now, you tell them. Make sure they hear. But I'm not going to give it to that group. And Jesus understands that. He doesn't go, why, why father? Is the God of heaven on right? He doesn't talk to him like that. This is so beautiful. Praise the Lord. Now, wrap up here. He says, uh, 
that seeing they may see, and not perceive, hearing they may hear, and not understand. Lest at any time, that's what I said, this is the risk. Lest at any time they should be converted, and their sins should be forgiven. Now, brethren, I want to I read that one again. Because I got to teach this before I die. Lest at any time they should be converted. That's the risk. He said, we can't risk that. And their sins should be forgiven. And why? Because he wants them to die in their sins. Because they had Moses in the law. And they're faking that. That's why I said. Bro. So he's saying, I'm not going to give you more. Because it's the ones that have it. They got it. They get more. You don't have it. It looks like you do. Because one writer says, that which they see. Seen the Pharisees just like man, they got they're on it, man. They'll find that crook. He busted that crooked priest. They got it. But in what it is, ravening wolves. Brother, this is this. It's how it all comes together for me. I hope it comes together for you. He says, and he said unto them, now watch what he says. Now. now this is the icing, and we're done. And he said unto them, now he explains it. See, now Matthew and write this. Know ye not this parable? And how shall you then? Well, you know all power. You see how heavy that is? This power of the seed, brethren, he said, this is the one you got to get for all the other power. Although I'm explaining it to y'all, he said, he asked them, see, remember, he, he tells them the parable. Now watch what happens. He tells them the parable, brother, this is important. They don't get it. Hold on. Then they ask the master, how are you speaking of the parable? <laughs> he said, well, it's not for them, it's for you. But then he asked, you don't get this? Don't you see that? Man, I'm not so thankful I ain't die. I know you're going to hear from somebody else, but I just have to say this before I die. You don't know this parable? He said, to the person. How does that show you know all power? Well, well, he's keeping it back from you. But, but I'm like, you don't know? I'll tell you about it, man. So then he breaks it down. See, this is the part Matthew didn't recall. Then he breaks it down because he knows, okay, okay, I'm going to break it down for y'all. Because if you don't get this one, you're not getting the other. Because we one of these four seeds. Brother, oh, Brother Fred, sorry. We one of these four seeds. Just make sure we that last one. Man, all these seeds are, are the Word of God. Yes. You know, all the seeds, they just land on different uh, yes. areas. But the last one is landing on the, it's landing on the heart. And mm -hmm. it's so it permeates deep, and then it. Thank you, preacher. Yeah, we want to be soft. Thank you, yeah. preacher. So it, thank you. it lands on uh, the fourth one. It lands on that soil, and it permeates, and then the fruit comes out. Yes. And so, when it comes to the word of God, as he mentioned to his disciples, he argued with them concerning the bread. Mm -hmm. uh, he argued with them concerning the wind mm -hmm. when they were afraid. Oh, ye of little faith. Uh, and then he argued with the concern of the bread. How do we get more bread? And he mentioned that, again, a little faith because they're forgetting the belief that they're supposed to have from the past. Amen. So you see, that was supposed to permeate deep and just immediately come out. Hey, you can produce the bread again like you did before. Just like the man that uh, said, just say the word and then she'll be healed. Mm. And I don't be. He immediately knew that. He knew that, and Jesus was looking for that in his apostles, because right. it's supposed to permeate, and it's supposed to be in you, and now you believe it. I believe that he can do that. I believe he can do it again and again, and so it just comes out, because it's in you. That's right. And so that's what Jesus is looking for uh, when it comes to faith, is that he wants us to believe his promises, believe his word, believe his structure of government, spiritually, everything that he's, that he's uh, put in his church. He wants to believe it, have faith in it, and move like that. That's because right. that's what he's pleased with when it comes out of you. You know, because that that fruit that he's mentioning uh, has to be in the saints of God. If if it doesn't land in the heart and it doesn't go in, then like the other three uh, seeds in the soils where location is among thorns, among rocks, mm -hmm. This not going to go in there, so it's not this, that's not going to come out. Right. And so, yeah, the, the Word of God is, you know, is what we have to partake of every single part that He told us to believe in. Mm -hmm. um, because if not, then it's it's not going to come out from. The, as time goes on, you'll see it didn't it didn't go all the way in. Amen. Thank you, preacher. God bless you. Thank you, brother Fritz, for correcting me. I said seed. I 
as the word is soil. But we want an old soil. Thank you, preacher. And the reason being is, brethren, is that you, you, you'll be the problem. I'll be the problem. As the brother just said. If it, if, if it, so it didn't sink in me, it didn't stay in me. Well, the, the bird got it. Okay, well, it didn't sink in me. Well, you're too hard, you know, and this is what I, and, and we would think this is going to manifest itself in everything. Mm-hmm. That's the preacher said. Not everything. It's going to come out of something. There's something about God you're not going to like before you leave. Someone's going to see that. The most important person is God already knows it. The angelic host is going to say, oh, man, this, this, one here not, this one here not getting it. And we have to understand, you got to go, why? We don't know. We do know one thing. They see, don't perceive, hear, don't understand. Heart is wax gross. We have to get that. And we don't want to be that brethren. Believe me, we do not want to be that God. Bless you. And we want to encourage you to know that. To let it sink into your heart. You know, one time Jesus told them, make sure you let this sink in. Just think he would tell you, no, see, no, man, y'all, this, you got to get this. You got to get something all in this. Here. How do you get this? How do you get all the time? You got to get this. And he tells them, you got to get this. You got to listen to me now. And see, he loved them. But he knew, man. You guys got to get it because I'm not going. If it wasn't bad for Jesus to be gone, he wouldn't have said, I'm not, not going to be with you all. How long? He knew, man, it's going to be, it's going to really be wrong, y'all. And I'll bail out. So you've got to get it. And they're like, well, when the Holy Ghost comes, it's on, it's all good. No. Peter's still struggling. Man, Acts 10, man. Like, dude, what is it? Not to beat him up. He's a greater man. I could imagine to be, but it's like, it's, what? No, Lord. You know, what? And, and this is the thing we all understand, but he loved them, and he loves us, brother. He loves you and me. He's going to help us. But one thing you got to accept, brethren, if somebody's in quicksand, they won't give you their hand. Please don't jump in and save them. <laughs> Let's see. Say, grab my hand. Hold, hold on to me, brother. We're going to pull you out, but we can't tell. Come in here and put my no, dude. It don't work. I'll jump in with you. I'll go down, too. That can't be like that. God bless you. We understand the comprehension of the gospel of Jesus Christ, your heart has to accept it, brother, and I have to accept it. First Corinthians 15, verse 3. Paul is very clear, Father, delivering to you. First of all, that which also I received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. This is simple, but if the heart is wax gross, it's not going to sink in. Mark 16, 15. Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believe in his baptized shall be saved. He that believe it not shall be damned. Acts 2.36. Peter is on point now. He's preaching. Therefore let all the house of Israel know surely that God hath made that same Jesus and him crucified. Most Lord in Christ. And when he heard this, and pricked in the heart, said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall, not might, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise unto you and to your children, to all that are far, even as many as the Lord our God shall call, and with men of the word that he testified in his heart, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received were baptized, and the same day they were added to them about 3,000 souls. They contained steadfastly, verse 42 says, And the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, and in prayers. Acts 2.47, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. Acts 8.34, here's a guy came from church, still doesn't know what's going on. Acts 8.34, the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this of himself or some other man. Then Philip opened his mouth and began the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. As they went on the way, they came with a certain one, the eunuch said, See, here is water. What does it hinder me to be baptized? Philip said, If thou believe it all thine heart, thou mayest. He answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He commanded the to stand still and went down both to the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Will we be Jews or Gentiles? Will we be bond or free? And have all been made to drink into one spirit. 1 Peter 3, 21 says, Baptism saved. The like figure. One to even baptisms also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is gone in heaven and on the right hand of God, angels, authorities, and powers, being made subject 
unto him. We must be faithful to the end. Brother Frias talked about that, being faithful. Revelation 2.10, fear. None of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of into prison, that you may be tried. You shall tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Look at Acts 19. Some may say, I've already been baptized. Being baptized and even told something out of the Bible that is incorrect will not save the soul. Here's an example. Acts 19.1. Came to pass that while I paused at Corinth, Paul had been passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finally served the disciples. He said unto them, Have received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. He said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? They said unto him, John's baptism. Then said Paul, John, barely baptized with baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. We've just read how to be saved. But there's certain parts of the Bible you can read, just like I just read. There's a lot of Church of Christ folk go, oh, glory, hallelujah. That's the gospel in its pure form. But if you're reading about marriage, divorce, and remarriage, he's going to get mad. If you tell him, you can get married again, how they repent. If you tell him, can't kill a baby just because you were raped because the baby has the right to live. You can read it. He's going to get mad. But he's not going to get mad at the gospel. But he's going to get mad at the other things that prick his heart to do right that he doesn't want. And that same seed that's thrown to get him in the Christ is the same seed that he's not going to receive when it deals with a subject he does not want to hear or she doesn't want to hear. And they are just as lost as the other three soils that the Lord spoke against. So we don't want that for anybody. And want to encourage you, don't let it happen to you. Make sure you put your spiritual life first, Matthew 6, 33. Your physical life also behind it. Can't do nothing if you're dead. Come now with a